are you? And you get the 909 kick being reinforced by this decaying, booming monologue synth sound. And if we go into the monologue synth itself in Devices VST Instruments, you can see that the attack, uh, the amp envelope has a, has a, the attack isn't fast, it's fairly slow, which means that the booming sound coming from the monologue is going rather than boom, boom, boom. So it's leaving just a little bit of a time for the 909 attack sound to come in here first. So the 909 is coming in here, and as it started to decay, this sub bass tone is fading up afterwards to give a sort of booming follow through. Yeah, and that, let's close that down. So there you go. That's how you got this kind of, um, you, can, you can use a combination of synths and drums uh, samples to create kick drums in the same pattern that, that are layered using multiple instruments within the same pattern in your drum map, routing the sounds to different outputs. And of course, with this uh, independent out note here setting, I can leave my pattern, the three notes I've put in to reinforce the kick drum, I don't have to move them around in pitch, I can just change the pitch. If I want that to be higher, I can put it up to D, E, let's say F2. And it's gone up in pitch, yeah? yeah. Let's say, let's put it up to um, C3. Yeah, you can hear it going up in pitch, yeah? C4. Drop it down to something like D, not D, E, F, say G2 for the out note. This is here. And we've got this lovely boom following the kick drum. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A combination of different drums within the same map. And I can even include in that loops. Now, my RMF has got a loop in it. Uh, let's just stop that. Remember, the RMF is the default for that track so if I hit the edit VST instrument button up here it'll bring up RMF I've got a there's a loop and it's on D sharp one okay let me just change the tempo down here to uh, 82 should kind of do it make the tempo whoops make the tempo slower get it down there move that out of the way again so um, what was it on D sharp one okay we've got the bass drum being played from the RMF that's playing a 909. We've got the snare from the RMF. We've got the clap from the LM7, which is on D sharp one, but being played by the LM7, remember. If I assign this D sharp this row to RMF, make sure my out note is D sharp one. And set this to and call this loop. Okay. Yeah, there's a loop. So now I'm gonna hit play. Now let me lower the, the velocity of this note. Remember I've got this row selected, so this is the velocity for that note, yeah? Lower it. It's not perfectly in sync, but you get the idea. You can add loops in as well. And this doesn't have to be the R RMF playing that loop. It can be a, a totally separate software sampler or an external sampler, yeah? The point is, your output allows you to assign individual rows to anything you like, whether it's a, a MIDI port, um, because it can be a MIDI port, yeah, there are MIDI ports here as well, then you can use individual rows to trigger external MIDI equipment, and you can either mix that with your output from your software instruments on a, an external mixing desk, or you can route your external MIDI gear back through your sound card into your software mixer and mix those external MIDI instrument sounds alongside your internal sounds to create patterns using internal and external MIDI gear. Um, or you can use a combination of different VST instruments. Um, and like I said, the beauty with the whole drum map thing is, let me take that out now, turn off that um, speaker feedback icon so it doesn't, when I click to remove it, I don't hear the damn thing play. Okay. Um, I mean, that's just, it's just fantastic, you know, because these notes do not move. I can, I can just ease, I can just go over here. I don't have to like, dr like highlight a row of notes and drag them all to a different pitch. I just change the MIDI out num note for this row and this pattern 
on this row for the kick drum can be assigned to any output I want, any out note I want, on any channel I want, and I can change the in note for that row as well so that it can be triggered from any pad or key on my keyboard that I require. And um, there you go, drum map. So let's just hear that beat again. I'll put it back up to 90. But um, the difference when you hear this pattern, if I take out the monologue by muting it, you know, it, it's just not the same. But put in that additional boom sub bass. Boom, boom. Oh man, I mean, that's just. Let me just. I'll just drop the volume of the little grace note there for the kick drum and for the boom from monologue. This kick, like boom, boom, boom. Make this one slightly less loud, so the accent is on these two. Let me drop that. So you've got boom, 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 and this becomes more of a sort of sub reinforcing note at a lower volume. And go and choose the monologue again, and drop that. Oop, drop that note. Just yeah, lovely. As easy as that. And you can hear the difference. So there you go. Multiple sound sources, all all playable from the same pattern. And um, yeah, drum map. Um, what else? I think I've shown you everything really, haven't I? I showed you the nudge palette for kicking notes around like that. I showed you the quantize override with the global quantize. The same works with the nudge palette, it then kicks by eighths because the quantize is set to eighths. If I set it to quarters, it would kick by quarters, yeah. Um, so we did all that. Turn the global quantize off. Um, yeah. There is one other thing this instrument length, inserted note length, sorry. Okay. You have got this insert velocity the same as in the key edit area where you can define five preset velocities to input. Uh, your notes using the the drum stick. So if I was putting in relatively quiet notes, like this row of hi hats, right? Let's take them out. Let's say I'm going to put them in at a velocity of 120 loud. So I go to my closed hi hat row here, and I just go, and it puts them in in eighths because I'm using an eighth here, and uh, they're loud, 120 up here. If I do undo insert notes and set the inserted velocity to come on to something lower 70 and draw in that thing there they are and they're lower in volume then you can tweak individual notes so you've got that you've got this insert length that's one other thing we've got which I haven't touched on yet and um, basically it defaults to set to drum map link which means if I have global quantize off the length of inserted notes will be the same as the quantize on the on a row okay so for example, the closed height is on eighths, everything else is on sixteenths. If I close this and on the track turn drum map off, no drum map, and then look at the notes as normal notes, here's the height notes and they're an eighth in length. There they are on F sharp one. Okay. If I put the drum map back on, go back in, rub that no row, row of notes out. I can use the drumstick key and click in, out, in, out, or I can use the rubber tool highlight them all, just click and delete. Yeah. If I now set this to 16th, put in my hi-hats, but take out every other one, so they're still playing an 8th pattern, but there's only, but it, the grid is in 16th, my drum map link is setting my inserted note length, which is 16th, I go back, turn off drum map, look at the parts, there's my hi-hat pattern, they're now 16th in length, but placed every 8th that's where I put them.